the biggest concern I had was the amount of negative feedback. It's, you know, everything is in front of everyone. You finally approach someone who is in a position of power and say, why didn't you tell the people about this? Well, it's been out there for years. You just chose to ignore it is going to be the answer. Like you say, there was a lot of negative, but there was a lot of positive. Well, I mean, you can't have good without the bad, or there would be no definition of true good. That's it. Should we do a proper intro this time and explain who you are? And um, obviously, you, you, your name's Mel. Um, I live in North Carolina. North Carolina. Um, and can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I started out in the medical field. Yes. I went through college, all that fun stuff, just like you and I, or you know, you and others would do. Mm-hmm. Um, I met my mate. We got married and had children. We traveled the world, and now I'm back here in my home and just living life. And after seeing all the negative press about you know hybrid life, I just I had I felt like I needed to step in and say, look, you know, this isn't right. You know, you have I put up a video last night explaining how you know prejudice has gone through numerous generations in your species you know you have a picture of a hooked nosed jew or an african-american with huge lips and chewing on a watermelon you know those images are regulated as racist and hateful and hurtful but yet you can slap a reptilian saurian face on top of miley cyrus and it's perfectly fine it's laughable you know that is also something that people need to understand. Partly because the government keep it from us. So people uh, don't really understand the... No, and that's a reason why a lot of reptilian, saurian, you know, earth people, they will not disclose their hybrid life to the public just because of the backlash. Do you not have as much power as we think you do? No, I'm, I certainly do not know the answer to everything. Yes. And I cannot, you know, glean information that is, you know, that's just against the rules. You don't do that. And who sets the rules? Is that your Bindar? Bindar? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's actually it's pretty much of an unspoken law. You, you don't take what is not readily given. So you, do you have a strict moral guidelines in in your religions um actually it's not just religion but as a society as a whole you know there are you know laws of life you know do not cause harm to another support one in its endeavors you know share what you can yeah you know this has been perverted in you know modern systems such as socialism whereas only the uppermost people will reap the benefits of socialism whereas the people who are giving in are suffering yeah you know i can't say hey andy um let's go out for pizza and i reach in and grab your wallet and pay with your money that is a watered down version of socialism you know i'm gonna feed all my friends with your money so can I just ask, your society, the Saurians, do they swing to the left or to the right, would you say, of politics? Actually, there is no left or right. It is strictly centered. Mm-hmm. It is based upon the good of the entire census. There is no winners or losers. Do you get a lot of Saurians in Switzerland? Because it seems that way in Switzerland where everyone has the right to vote on everything, so... Do you get do you get a lot of um, Saurians in Switzerland? You're touching on a lot of a lot of uh, stuff, but I can direct you that the uh, the neutral ground countries have a higher percentage of Saurian than hominid. Did you mean I was getting too close to the truth? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, I know. No, no, it's just there's things that I'm allowed to talk about and some things that, you know, are frowned upon. And can I include this in the video? 
Yes. Yes, okay. Can I ask you about the Templars then? Because the Templars, I know a lot of the Templars went from uh, when they was being persecuted, they escaped to Switzerland and started the banking as we know it now. Yes. So was the Templars anything to do with um, the Saurians? Quite opposite. The Templars are actually are based out of the, um, I'm going to try to remember, the uh, the Freemasons. Yes. And they're very um, much into their doctrine. When they left, they established the Knights Templar. They're the ones that hold, you know, knowledge, technologies, things like that, that they don't want out into the mass population. Right. Because there is a lot of Masons, isn't there? There's millions of them. Oh, yes. And their tools especially, if you notice, they encompass the shapes and the vibrations I was talking about in an earlier video. Um, the circle, the triangle, and the bar. Mm -hmm. It used to be represented by the sextant, the globe, and the level. Can I also ask about the Scythians? Have you ever heard about the story of the Scythians, how they was uh, came to be? Yes, they were vilified in saying that they carried the blood of Cain. Yeah, that's true. I've done a video on that myself. Um, so it was actually the Greeks... Um, I think it was Hercules mm -hmm. uh, that told the story of uh, he had babies with um, a half snake, half human woman. A naga. Yeah. Um, also, while we're on the subject of naga, can you explain the different races, please? Yes, of course. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. That's what I mean, yeah. because people get confused with alpha draconians and saurians, don't they? So... Can you please explain that and what the difference is? Okay, the Alpha Draconians are one of the three hostile races. They do not hybridize with hominids. They do not hybridize with other species. However, they do modify their own genetic code to have the ability to do things that normally they would regard they're too dirty for their own hands. They're a very pompous race. Um, we talked about George and the Dragon. And just a light recap, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was a hybridized Alpha Draconian, and we would call those chameleons. Right. They still have a very outer appearance of a reptiloid species. However, they have no human traits whatsoever, nor do they have a moral compass. They are merely drones. Right. And are, no. they, are they drawn through the parasitic aspect? No. But what do you mean by drone then? Are they just created uh, in a lab with no, no feelings? and? Well, there's no moral compass. There's no so they just, yeah. process of, oh, this is wrong, or, hey, maybe I should do this. It is strictly a survival mechanism. Okay. So the Saurians, how do they differ from the Alpha? Well, the Saurians are Terra-based, which means we originated on this planet. We care deeply about the goings-on mm -hmm. of this planet. You know, we don't want to see our natural resources traded off for technology that will be used for ill will. That could damage us both, hominid and Saurian. Okay. Yeah, because they were looking for something inner Earth, weren't they, the Nazis? Mm-hmm. Um, and did they find anything? Do you know if they found anything? Did they? Is that where they got all this technology from? No. Um, von Braun, one of the Nazi scientists, actually developed one of the engines from an earlier time. Um, if you look at his reports, he, when the U.S. was actually interrogating him, like, where did you attain this knowledge? And he just simply smiled and said, from them. So do you think this was maybe off drawings and cave drawings and stuff like that? And... No, I believe, honestly, it was, you know, 
direct conversation. Because I've heard um, the Nazis discovered anti-gravity from looking at the god Mercury. Because if you look at the god Mercury, uh, he's holding a spiral uh, with wings on his um, feet. And apparently that symbolised if you spin Mercury fast enough, then you'll get um, flight. And they, they found that just off looking at the god Mercury. It is possible with an acceleration chamber, but not nearly as effective as hydrogen in having it polarized. Alpha draconians, do they come from the Serpus star cluster? Sirius. Is it Sirius they come from? Yeah. Okay. And they arrived um, 2000 BC around that time? I would like to say possibly i would i would honestly say earlier okay depending okay. on the timeline and have you ever heard of um the gate or the portal yog yog sothoth yes yog sothoth yog sothoth can you tell us about that please well they're simply jump gates yeah are they in outer it's... space there are domiciled on heavenly bodies there's no if i were to throw you out of a door on a you know seven story building yeah you would you would meet your doom you would die there's no cushion there's no you know hospitable place for you to exit is that a threat so <laughs> it's more of a spiritual thing no, quite opposite. It's quite physical. Is this the sort? Is this the um, the dial what you see on the Sumerian arm in the um, on the tablets? Yes, you like would a, see like a watch. Yep, yeah, yeah, you would see it depicted as either a circle with the bottom part removed. Yes, I'd say the bottom eight. Yes, and each one of those runes have to activate before the portal is met and it has to be in sync with the destination and is this something you know how to do myself no i am not an engineer and did you say runes does that mean viking runes there is yes there is a direct correlation with that and are the viking runes more powerful than we think they are do they have um, spells and magic? Well, not so much as spells and magic, just coordinations. Now, there is no magic. It's only science that you have not yet understood. I mean, if you were to go up to one of these gates, there are coated in a hydrophilic polymer. This allows the ionization process to begin, to allow passage. Okay. And do you know where these passages are? Where or how? Where? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us? Oh, where? Yeah. Oh, oh. there what? are... Let's see if I can do this without getting into trouble. Look at your monuments. In which country? All. If you ever want to buy, there's pyramids in every single ancient civilization. Yes, with all the same designs. You know, yes. people who never contact, they all have these same design. That is not natural. A gates then. Um, some yes, internally, uh, they're usually down in the lowermost chambers of those. Wow. And do you know anything about the tablets of uh, Toth? The Emerald Tablets of Toth? Or Thoth? I honestly have not... Yep, Thoth. Yeah. I have not studied his tablets, however. Um, I do have some books that I can go get if you like. No, that's fine. I was just going to say because apparently there's... He says there's a spaceship buried underneath the Giza Pyramid. 
And, well, there's um, several. There's several. Yes, that... you can look out into the ocean just off the coast of Japan and see one of the largest. By the way, all this information, is this taught to you or do you learn this yourself? Well, information is not necessarily learned, it's shared. So do you share this through gleaning? Gleaning, social interaction, and the such, yes. And is it true you can access all your ancestors' um, memories and stuff like that? Yes. Wow. Consciousness can be passed down just as data can be passed from one computer to another. So can I can I ask you about your parents? Is that okay? Uh, yes. And which one is it that's um, the Saurian? My father. And his, is he a pure Saurian or was he a hybrid? He was also a hybrid. Right. And his parents, were they hybrids? No. Right. Were they... His father was a full Saurian. Right, right. And did you get to meet him? Once. Did that shock you? No. Did you know what to expect? Had, had you met them before? Excuse me? Have, had you met full Saurians before? Not at that point in time. So, or prior to my prior to my knowledge. But it didn't shock you seeing that, no. No. Well, it's like don't don't make fun of Papa's skin condition. <laughs> right. right. And um, he always always wore glasses. And did he work for the government or anything like that? He was actually a part of the navy. Right. Okay. Sorry, the Lacerta transcript. Can you tell us a bit about that? Because people on on our channel were saying that um, you're just copying what they're saying. I've never heard of it. Well, I mean, Lacerta is a full Saurian, and she gave her interview in '99. Okay. She was she instructed the people that were giving the interview that were hosting not to take images. I mean, it's easy to present yourself, you know, as a hominid. But to a camera, it's not very well or not very easily done. And no matter what the history is, if you have, you know, a sixth grade child talking about their history, whereas you have a senior in high school talking about their history, it's going to be the same. Right. So there's no copying. It's just repeating what is already understood. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell them, but. You know what people are like. <laughs> and well, when you challenge somebody's doctrine and somebody's, you know, core belief system, there's going to be two reactions. Either you're going to have someone re revert back to a primate and screeching and flinging poo, or you're actually going to have someone who has intellectual conversation and wants to know more. Yeah. And those are the ones we are trying to reach. Good, good. And you're the Teresarians and... Can you just tell us how many there is in on Earth, in numbers? Is there millions of you? Uh, we're pretty high up on that scale. But you don't want to tell us exactly? I can tell you it's not as much as the human population. Right. But I can tell you that hybrids represent 16% of the current population. When you say the Alpha Draconians do not hydrolyze, what do you mean by that? They, how can I akin this to, they're almost on the level of the Nazis with their blood is pure. They will not be tainted by other out, you know, lesser beings. Yeah. Right. And right. have you ever wondered why, you know, even through biblical times, it was important for people to keep whom or to keep track of whom they were breeding with even before people had a concept of dna or genomes but it was very very important for those people to keep track of who and what their lineage was are the alpha draconians on the planet at the minute no they will not come here however they do work in tandem with the greys right 
And when I asked you, you said um, the earth is like a pantry to them. Is that true? Yes. So. They're mainly interested in the hydrogen in our water. Yeah. Copper. Yeah. In the ground. Yeah. And unfortunately, some of your DNA code. So would you say our leaders are mostly sort of like farmers, if you look at it that way? Farmers, I would more say landlords. Yeah, but are, are they not keeping looking after the cattle? No, honestly, some of your leaders could care less what happens to the cattle. As oh. long as they get payment. Can you tell us about the chameleons? Can you, is, um, do they, what do they look like in the natural form and compared to, can you, can you spot a chameleon? Well, one chameleon that was spotted and is quite famous is your George and the Dragon. Right. Can you tell us about him? Well, uh, let's see. And please correct me if I recite this wrong. But this chameleon, known as the dragon, in your not-so-recent past, was in an area of a village. And it would take small animals, pets, you know, livestock, children, and do with what it would. It would just consume. Well, to avoid this situation... The farmers and the locals would bring two sheep a day to a outside location where they could possibly keep it at bay. Well, it worked for a little while. However, when the sheep ran out, people began bringing out their children. And I can't understand why you would sacrifice your offspring. That is your legacy. Well, why didn't they just um, attack the creature? Fear. I suppose I can understand that, because uh, was there a lot of myth around them days as to his magic and stuff like that? Yes. Well, you know, back in that time, you know, you can also see it in the Americas as well. A lot of farming communities had 8, 10, 12 children. Yes. And yeah. the mortality rate was quite low, or excuse me, quite high. I, yeah. I digress. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, life expectancy was low, <laughs> but, you know, it was under the understanding of, oh, we can just have another one. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's the best summary I could come up with, because anything else would just not make sense in the least. No, oh, wow, that's crazy. So, the Nagas, how are they different? Well, the Nagas appear to be humanoid from the torso up. Right. They are also winged. They have two wings instead of four, like the Alpha Draconians. Right. So they can fly. Yeah. They can, they can. Um. Actually, it's not necessarily a flight. It is more like a mantle or a coverage. Right. So for protection. Yes. Right. And can you tell us about Trudon, the Greek? Oh, Trudon, Wounding Tooth. Yeah, Wounding Tooth. Uh, Trudon was an was our common ancient ancestor. Just as you have, you know, Africansis Arthropithecine, I do believe. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> but Trudon actually had the largest brain capacity of all the species on the planet at that time. He had three toes and three fingers. He was also carnivorous. You know, due to this hyperintelligence, he was able to evolve and change over time and learn. You know, the tail disappeared because we no longer needed that for balance. I mean, even though he was bipedal, you know, just as, you know, anything is nowadays but you know let's look at kangaroos for example they are also bipedal but sometimes they will go on all fours right. to forage whatnot. not Trudon was no different 
Right. And can you tell us about Pazuzu? Pazuzu was one of the first Alpha Draconians that came to the area known as Samaria. So he's the guy on the tablet depicted with the wings? Yes. With the um, device on his wrist? Yes. Which we know is now is a portal device? Actually, it's a temporal shift. <laughs> what, what's, I've what? too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. A temporal shift just allows one to attune their physical body to a frequency vibration to where they can pass through solid matter. Right, okay. So it can turn into a ghost, really. Layman's terms, yes. Is that where ghosts come from? Um, no, I would say the way you accept ghosts, the way you put it, is simply interaction with the post-plasma layer. Yeah, so you're saying there is things, such things as spirits? Um, it's actually energy. Like, existence is duality. Yeah. In this, you know, in the sphere of influence, you and I, the chair you're sitting in, are all on the physical layer. Existence is duality. So on the post-plasma layer, you also exist. However, you exist as pure energy. When your physical body is destroyed, your post-plasma self still exists for some time, although there is no consciousness. There is a physical manifestation of yourself. So, like a light bulb going out and that little dim light staying on for a while? Yes. Right, I get you. And can you tell us about the parasitic... Is it is it possible for the Alpha Draconians to take over a human body? Yes, the parasitic organisms. Um, this would be, you know, it could be given aerial or by direct contact. Um, it's a parasitic symbiotic organism. And I know that's a catch-22 there because parasite and symbiotes are two opposite things as we understand them. Okay. But if I were an alpha draconian and to give you this parasite, it would live within you in your cellular level into your hippocampus. There I can pull information that is not privy to it being given in a normal way. So I can also upload information to say, okay, Andy, I need this, this, and this from the store. You're going to go get it and bring it to me. So is that how they control the world leaders? Some, yes, unfortunately. Right. And is there any way to remove the, once it's, once it's in your body, is there any way to remove it? Once the physical body dies, the parasite also dies. Right. If the, if the symbiote is removed, then it can actually cause lasting neurological damage to its host. Right. Wow. And uh, can they do the same to you? Unfortunately, yes. Right. Can you tell us about the threat, the Alpha Draconians? Uh, is there any way we can fight them, or are we, is that it? Are we uh, too weak? There are some species that hominids, yes, are, I'm not going to say inferior to, but in lack of a better term, that would be the case. You know, the only defense we have is through other species, which maintain a peaceful, neutral ground on this planet. And can you tell us who they are, please? Uh, your Nordics, your Pleiadians. And are they eight foot tall, like they say? Um, that would be saying that every basketball player is eight foot tall. Right. They do come in all sizes, but they are more along the lines of being taller than normal. 
Right. Have you ever met with any of these other, uh, other races? I personally have not. However, I've had shared information of them. The Pleiadians. The Ple are they the Nordics or are they a different race? They are a different race. Right. But are they humanoids? Yes, they are humanoids. Right, right. I mean, they do not have the scales, nor do they have the eyes. They have bright cerulean blue eyes, and they're often lacking a lot of pigment. But the, going back to when I said it was a different race, those are the Agarians. Right. Who are they, sorry? Huh? Those are your Nordics. Right, Agarians, right, okay. Then you have the elves. E L S elves. Right, elves, right. They're one of the older races. The right. Anakim or Elogim. Yes. Uh viable they were referred to as Titans. You say the um, the Alpha Draconians they're in um, a correlation with the Greys, is that true? Yes. The Greys are actually working with several gov world governments in exchanging technology for raw materials. Can you tell us a bit about HARP? Um, it, that's actually a technology that came through the Greys into our society. This was to help alleviate, you know, drought-stricken areas to bring rain into crops and to you know, revitalize areas that were rendered inhabitable. However, through the misguided wisdom of the Greys, it was also employed as a military tactic by causing floods, earthquakes, and tsunamis. You know, these disasters are foretold because power corrupts absolutely. So, was this anything to do with the deluge, the harp? Kind of. Because I remember you say it wasn't a, a comet that caused the cataclysm that wiped everything off Earth. Well, not everything, you know, but wiped a lot of things off Earth. It was an actual explosion, wasn't it? Yes, and in combination with the hydrogen in the water, yeah. the area of effect was amplified exponentially. So that caused the flood, though, that explosion? Yeah. Right, right. So that had nothing to do with harp? No. Right, okay. And uh, can you tell us a bit about, um, a bit of a touchy subject, the Queen, the Queen of England? Is uh, she anything? Do you really want to know the answer to that question? Do you really want to know how many answers to that question there are? Okay. She is the figurehead of your government. Yes. She is quite beloved. She is. And she's very long lived. That's true. I will let you decide what she is from that information. What about Putin? About what? P Putin, Russia. Oh, Putin? Oh. Oh, he has access to certain technologies as well. But is he human? Far from it. No. I, I would have guaranteed he was human. See, he's fighting against all this, it seems. No, he is actually looking to maintain our place as it is, just right. as I am. Right. What do you mean by that? Well, look at his physique for a man his age. Look at his cognitive abilities. Yeah. yeah. He is no full hominid, I can tell you. Right. Also, I've done a lot of research into Alexander the Great. Can you tell us a bit about him? Did he actually... Um, f was he one of your enemies? No. 
because there's a story in the Quran and it tells about sealed an entrance to their underground realm and he uh, melted copper and iron and everything and sealed the gates or something. Have you ever heard of that story? Yes, actually. Is that a secret? No, it's not. But it's being kept. It's being kept from us, isn't it? Well, it's not being kept. It's out there. It's just a matter of you reading about it or yeah. learning about it. So, can you tell us about that? Was that a big, big thing to get rid of them out of the Middle East? Was it taking over there or something? What, what was? Well, Alexander did a lot of good and unknowingly some bad. However, his ambitions were not for himself, but for the benefit of his own people. But why was, he de- why was he depicted with two horns? Okay, if I were to come into your house and say, this is now my property, this is now my home, either join me or die, would you not depict me with horns? I believe he was depicted as a shaitan from the Persian Empire. Right. It's like he even stated, you know, how he took, you know, Scythian technology and adapted it to himself and his own army. You know, he's quoted as saying, my clothing is a Scythian cloak. My shoes are hard soles of my feet. My bed is the earth. My food is only seasoned by hunger and I eat nothing but milk, cheese and meat. His mom was supposed to be a snake worshipper as, as well. Did you hear about that? Is this a, a Saurian priestess? His mum was? Yes. So she was a hybrid? Correct. So that means he was? He carried certain traits, yes. So but that... as a on hybrid, no. So he fought against his own people, really? Well, he was of two peoples. He fought for, and some things were for one people and not another. Some benefited both. Yeah. But never once did it benefit none. Obviously, everyone wants control, don't they? I mean, if no one wants to live under another race or another, you know what I'm saying? So I can understand you wanting to take control. That's understandable. I, I mean, it's, it's like it's any... Not- it's like any religion wants to take control. That's, um, why, that's why you go to vote, in it, to get people in control. It's more control over one's own... Base, be the captain of your own ship. So did Alexander the Great seal anyone into this? Can you tell us he about that? our entrances, yes. And was that at Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai. Sinai? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's things that I have to digest them and reword them in a way, one, that you will understand, and two, one that won't get me into trouble. That's it, okay, yeah. Is there anything else you can tell us about who we can trust and who we can't trust? Question everything. If you get the same answer over and over again from different sources, then you can hold that as truth. However, if there's varying answers from different sources, then you know that is obscured from your knowledge. And also, I just want to um, just point out, in your last interview, you said it was only full Saurians that could shapeshift. Yes. So I was trying to explain that to people. So you can't shapeshift, that's right. No. Right, yeah, I understand that, but people just couldn't understand that. So, but you say you have the eyes. Yes. So maybe next time we do a video interview, can we get that on picture, or would you not like that? Well, I it's not a controlled thing, just as you can't control your own pupils. So if you had a torch and you close your eye, put and then opened it, would it not count? Would it not act? The blinkers. Well, if I close my eyes, my pupils would be fully dilated. And as I opened them, you would see it, you know, you would have to use a a certain frame rate, but yeah. the people would come together in the ellipsis, elongate, and then flatten back out into a circle. And would you be willing to do that? 
I can try. I will attempt it for you. Oh, thank you. And I don't, I'm not like making you out to be a freak show or anything, but if you're willing to do that, that's great. Um, honestly, I just wait for more questions. Can you tell us before we go anything about crystals? Well, a crystal in its purest form has the ability to hold more data than you can imagine. Right. This is un uncorruptible data. You can utilize this and pass it down from one generation to the next without having the worry of, you know, the degrading of the code. So maybe this is like a hard drive? Uh, a, an immortal hard drive. Yeah. So you're saying you could smash that piece of crystal up and it would still hold the information? Yes, because it's written on the actual crystal itself, not as in a crystal you can hold in your hand, but on that simple geometric, you know, fringe. Yeah. Wow. Each crystal that you can hold is compromised of trillions of those. Just as they grow like a snowflake. Well, one thing I would like to leave you with is something you can study and that'll bring a lot of questions with I know hopefully I can give a lot of answers to but okay. are you familiar with Martha's Vineyard near Montauk Point no I've never heard that okay well write that down just south of there is the Pemdar village or vineyards well that the wine is damn good just one more thing before you leave sorry would you class yourself part of the Illuminata? Well, we do have an Age of Enlightenment. And as you know, the Illuminati has been vilified by pretty much every group out there. And it's because we wish to illuminate others, to pass on the torch of knowledge. Now, you can either take this knowledge and use it, or you can take that knowledge and turn it into a witch hunt. The choice is up to the individual. Thank you very much, Mel. Not a problem, Andy. It's a pleasure. So I'll see you again on the 19th. All right.